What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in today. Come on, let's worship together. We sing it out. You have come. You have come, and we have found life everlasting. Now alive to know your freedom, never ending. You alone made a way for us in your love. You are life from living in the light of my Savior. Dancing. Pull 
Thank you. 
Church. Whether you've been here with us for the past year or so, or whether this is your first time ever being a part of our family and community, we're so glad you're here. My name is Leighton. I'm the pastor of the church and we're a church planner here. And we're excited about what God is doing in Lubbock, Texas. And this morning, I want to talk to you about something that he's laid on my heart specifically for you and for your family. I want, I want us to talk about waiting on God. We're going to do that from, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there and we'll jump into it. While, while you're getting your Bibles out and while you're turning to that, I wanted to talk to you about what God has really laid on my heart for this morning for you. And, and that is this, is that while we're in this social isolation, while we're waiting in so many ways, we're waiting for a cure, we're waiting to get out of our house, we're waiting for businesses to open back up, we're waiting for schools to open back up. We're waiting. I feel like that God is laying on our hearts some specific different things for each of us. For some of you, for some of us, it may be that he's reminding us of things that, that he's planted on our hearts long ago that he shared with us and that we've even forgotten about. That we thought the time has passed for that. But he's bringing back to life. He's renewing that. He's reviving that inside of us. For some of us, as we wait on him in this season, he's going to start um, downloading some things to us about what he has specifically for us. My life has been a life of waiting in so many ways. I've talked to several of my friends about the fact that, that I wanted to get going and it just seems like life has been slower for me. But in the midst of that, I've stayed centered on who he is and I've stayed centered on the fact that he is good. And we're going to see this in the scripture. The Israelites in the scripture were waiting. They were, they've been in captivity with the Assyrians and now they're in captivity with the Babylonians and Isaiah's writing saying, hey, that's coming to an end. There's freedom coming for you. And I want to stress to you today that as we're waiting on him, there's things that are coming for you. And there's going to be a part of this sermon as I'm preaching today that's going to convict you, that it's going to, going to just sear your heart. And I want you to address that today, today as you wait on him. In waiting, I waited for Melissa, my wife, for 37 years before I got married. And man, I wanted to be married when I was in college, but I waited. And she is a blessing to my soul. I, I wanted kids when I was in high school even. And I waited. And now I have five kids of my own, and they're a blessing in my life. But the, the journey that most of you that are part of our family know about is, is this waiting on our church. It's been a crazy time. Uh, it's over 20 years ago now. God laid on my heart to be a senior pastor and to plan a church. Didn't know it was going to be Lubbock 20 years ago. Didn't know so many of the steps that would be taken. But here we are. And now, as, as next week even, we were going to have our launch at Easter. And that's been postponed, of course, because of all that's going on in the world. I wait even longer. And, and that disappointment can rise up. But then there's an expectation of what he's birthed in our hearts to do. And so today, as we're waiting and learning to wait, I want to take you on a journey through this. Um, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of Isaiah 40, it's just a journey of a progress. It's, it's a new beginning. You can see that Isaiah, as God is pouring out on him, starts stressing some new things. And at the first of it, there's really four voices that we're hearing. The first of those is the voice of pardon in verses 1 and 2. Some of you this morning, as you start hearing this, and the minute I said that, your, your thoughts instantly went to something in your past. Some of you, it's long ago. Some of you, it's maybe even last night or this morning. But something that you've done that you've known, man, that, that is not God's will for my life. And God is coming this morning and says, man, I want to pardon you. I want to forgive you of that. That's why I sent Jesus to wash that away. I want, I want you to repent. I want you to turn away from that and come back to me. And so this is what he writes, comfort, comfort my people. So, so immediately he jumps in with, with not an accusation, but, but a, a, a drawing in, a comforting. I remember when I was little, my mom had a rocking chair that I still have today, and, and she would rock me. She would rock my brothers. When we needed comforting, we could crawl up in her arms and just be rocked. And God is saying, I want to comfort you, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. And proclaim to her 
that her hard service has been completed. That hard service is, is severe trials that they're going through, maybe spiritual warfare that's going on. That her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. This verse is saying the, the truth of it, that they were still his people and he loved them. He hadn't forgotten them. He hadn't forsaken them. In the midst of all their trials and tribulations, he was there. And the story is still true for us today that we are still his people. And he still loves us. When it's talking here to speak tenderly, the very start of this chapter is saying, to speak to the heart of the people. And sometimes we can be in life and, and our hearts can get busy and, and frightful and full of fear or full of disgrace or, or full of adventure, whatever it may be, and all of a sudden he's hard to get to. He's hard to hear. And he's saying this morning, I want you to strip that away. I want you to take those things away and I want to speak to your heart this morning. The next voice we hear is the voice of providence, a, a voice of preparing the way. In the times that this was written, it was said that ambassadors would go before the king and prepare a way. That would mean that they would make the road smooth for where they were carrying it. That if there were rocks in the way, they'd move those rocks out of the way. If there was dips in the road, they'd flatten out those dips. They'd remove any obstacles to make way for the coming king. Isn't that a beautiful picture of exactly what he wants us to do? At Story Church, we want to know God. We want to grow in him and we want to go where he's telling us to go. For some of us, that knowing God, there are people in Lubbock that don't know him. There are people around the world. There's maybe even you watching this don't know him. And we are here so that you can know him. We are here to prepare a way for him to come. In Isaiah 40, verse 3, it says this, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The ultimate fulfillment of this is John the Baptist as he prepared a way for the ministry of Jesus. Spiritually speaking, Israel was in the wilderness when Jesus came. But when Jesus came, God's glory came with him. And we have that opportunity. We have that gift. We have, we have that blessing of knowing him today. And maybe you've been in the wilderness. Maybe, maybe you, there are things in your life right now that you're not understanding that you're not prepared for, that you feel like uh, don't make sense. If God was really God, it doesn't make sense that this would happen. But he's saying, you rest in me. Share your heart with me. And then help me prepare the way. Preparing the way for others starts with the preparation of ourself. How are we making the plan straight? The third voice we hear is the voice of promise. In Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says this, The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Like grass, nations and leaders fulfill their purpose and they fade away. But the word of God remains. It's faithful. It's true. It remains forever. And we can stand on that. That's why it's so important. It's not out of legalism that we're in the word daily. It's out of relationship. It's out of wanting to know them. And, and God is writing to them here. And he's telling us today, as we begin our journey back to him, as they begin their journey home, they could depend on God's promises. That is true for us. We can depend on the fact that he's in control. The fourth voice is the voice of peace. Maybe you don't know God as a peace. Maybe, maybe your life is not full of peace right now. Maybe there's worry, there's anxiety, there's fret from the unknown. But he's coming in as the voice of peace. In Isaiah 49, it says this, 
You who bring good news to Zion, go up on high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. We can declare God's victory over the enemy. We see it biblically so we can declare we have victory through him. It's, they're, they're bringing the good news that they're talking about God that they would be free from Babylon. And the good news today is the defeat of sin and Satan by Jesus and the salvation of those who trust in him. I love as you go on in verse 10 and you'll want to read this at home that God's arm is mighty for winning battle. He's strong. Whatever battle we're in, he's fighting it for us. He's mighty to do that. But then in verse 11, it's also loving arm for carrying his weary lambs. On one arm, he's protecting. On the other, he's loving. That is who our God is. And we can proclaim that. We can't obey God in our own strength, but we can always trust him to provide the strength we need. In Isaiah 40, 12 through 26, he goes on to write to us about two different circumstances they face, and we will face two. There's two things in our life that are going to be true. There's circumstances that are going to happen. The first one is when you behold the greatness of God, then you will see everything else in life in its proper perspective. The circumstances that are before us, the circumstances of the things that, that we're seeing, that, that we can worry about. Oh my goodness, is, is someone in my family going to get sick? Oh my goodness, um, the circumstance I see of, of we're not working right now, the, co the economy seems to be tanking, how are we going to have our needs met? You see, right now Isaiah's writing to the people and they're thinking, were the false gods stronger than Yahweh? But no, he's saying no. I am there. I am there for you. In verse 12 through 20, he's writing, and you can read this, God's greater than anything on earth. And in verses 21 through 26, he goes on to write, God's greater than anything in heaven. Anything on earth we may be facing and anything that the enemy wants to throw against us in spiritual warfare we may be facing, God is greater. Now take hold of that this morning. God is greater. God is greater in all that we're doing. So when you behold the greatness of God, then you will see everything else in life in its proper perspective. I, I, I heard a, an example one time of, of how a telescope should to be used. And you look and, 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 and you look through one end and you see the greatness. But if you look through the other end, perhaps you've done this before, you see how tiny things are. And sometimes we look and we look through the wrong view. We have the wrong view of who God is and we think that he's too small. He's too far away. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't even know me. And no, the truth of it is, is he's so great we can't even see all of who he is. In fact, as we go specifically in verse 15, he talks about the, the other things are dropping a bucket compared to him. The other people, the things that we see, the obstacles we see, they're like grasshoppers to them. He cares about you so personally that he knows the name. In verse 26 it says this, he knows the name of every star. If we skip to the New Testament in John 10, 13, it says that he knows your name as well. I love what the psalmist writes in 147. It says, the same God who numbers and names the stars can heal your broken heart. He knows you. He knows your heart. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he has great things for you. And as we start to see that, the next thing comes in, that God knows how we feel and what we fear, and he is sufficient to meet every need. I was looking for a better word there, but sufficiency is it. He can do everything that he needs to do. In every circumstance, he's adequate. He's more than adequate. He, he's above what we need or think. And so this morning, as you're sitting here waiting on God, and we're going to learn here, we're going to take steps here in a minute 
to, to wait on him. But, but as we're waiting and we're in this season and so many things come to our mind, we need to get into the fact that he is a big, big God. And we're little, little people. And he's in control. This virus was not a shock to him. The economy is not a shock to him. The fact we're not starting our church next week is not a shock to him. We will launch when he calls us to launch. And he knows that from the beginning. And with his blessing, we will do exactly what he's calling us to do. The circumstances, the next set of circumstances are those circumstances that are within us. In Philippians 4.13 uh, Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You see, if we trust in ourselves, we will faint and fail. Well, I've got to take care of my family. I've got, I've got to go get another job. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. And there are some things that he may be laying on your heart that you need to do that are wisdom. But I'm saying if we're struggling to take care of this all by ourselves, instead of resting in him and going, God, what do you want me to do? What doors do you want to open up? How do you want to meet my needs? What are you wanting me to do to meet other people's needs in the midst of what I need? Then we can start leaning on his strength. Because if we wait on the Lord by faith, we will receive strength for the journey. If we wait on the Lord for our strength, we will receive strength for the journey. So I want to talk to you. That brings us to, to Isaiah 40, 31. But they who wait on the Lord, they that wait for the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they won't faint. So to wait is to hope, to look to God for all that we need. Uh, uh, when we're waiting, I, I remember when I was in college, I, I waited tables. There were two tables here in Lubbock. That I worked at Harrigan's and, and when it was on 50th Street and I worked at, at Abuela's. And I waited tables and when I was waiting tables I didn't just sit there. Man, I wouldn't have been around long. Another word for waiting is to serve. And so I would go and I would look for ways that I could serve people. What were the needs that they have and how could I meet them? And it's not that God has any needs. He chooses us to, to worship him. And we can sit and we can serve him. And we can say, God, I want to be in the midst of what you're doing. And I want, I want you to use me however you want to use me. That, that, that I can help meet that need through you and through your strength. And that is waiting on God. That renew there shall renew their strength. It's literally what that what, what Isaiah is writing there is taking off old clothes and putting on new ones. Don't you love new clothes? I, I hate that we're missing Easter for so many reasons, but one of the more minimal ones, one of the smaller ones is, I just like wearing new clothes at Easter. You're all dressed up and looking good and, and looking fine. And, and what, what, what happens is when I'm wearing new clothes, there's just a different feel about me. I don't know if it's that way with you guys, but when I'm wearing something that I really like and it's new and, and I, I just feel better about myself. And God is saying here, as we wait for the Lord, he renews us. He takes off that worry. He takes off that fret. He takes off those clothes that we've been wearing that aren't from him and he renews our strength. So let's talk about how do we wait on God. First of all, we meditate on his character. And his promises. Praying and seeking to glorify him. Now the meditation here. Is not something where we're. We're trying to get everything out of our mind. And clear our mind of all. And be thoughtless in all what we're doing. No we're so concentrated on his character. We're so concentrated on his promises. And we're praying and seeking to glorify him. In all that we do. These are some questions to ask. And. And let me say, none of this is bad. TV is not bad. But if it's taking the time of God and, and, and you're not taking the time to meditate on him because you're watching TV till late at night, my goodness, you're, you're, you're giving some pleasure for, for the greatness of God. What we listen to, are, 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 we, are we spending time in prayer? Maybe you haven't prayed ever in your life. Prayer is just talking to God. 
Go outside and go on a walk and just say, God, this is what's on my heart. And then take time to listen. What is he saying to us? We exchange, as we meditate, as, we, as we're spending time in his presence, and we're just, we're just causing our thought process to be his thought process, causing our mind to be on the word of God. What does the word of God say about this situation? That's what I'm going to say about this situation. He puts his angels of protection around us, guarding us from all evil. He meets every need that we have according to his riches and glory. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing. I start concentrating on those things. Instead of watching the news and concentrating on the news, I'm concentrating on what he says. Instead of listening to doctors, and I love doctors, so this is nothing bad about doctors, but instead of, of listening to the worry and the fret that they may bring, we're listening to God and knowing that he, our hope is in him. As we wait before him, God enables us to soar when there's a crisis, to run when the challenges are many, and to walk faithfully in the day-to-day -day demands of life. So in this crisis, we can soar because we're meditating on him. When challenges come, and there are many, we can walk faithfully. We can walk faithfully in him. And in the day-to-day -day demands of life, we, we can just rest in him and glorify him. It's much harder to walk in the ordinary pressures of life than to fly like an eagle in times of crisis. We know that, but now we're in a time of crisis in our nation. And we can soar because of who he is. As we wait on the Lord, we gain three things that I want to talk to you about. Three things that are important, and I want you to grab hold of this. One, we gain hope. Hope is an expectation of the fulfillment of something desired upon us. Our hope is in Jesus. As Christians, uh, we believe that, that, yes, he died on the cross, but he rose again. He overcame the grave. He overcame the enemy on our behalf. He has gone before us, the word says, and prepared a way for us. We can sit at the table of our enemies and have peace, perfect peace. Our hope is in all that he's done in the past. Our hope is in all that he's doing in the present. Our hope is in all that he's going to do in the future. He is our hope. He is our steadfast. And so... So we have an expectation that, that the fulfillment of what he's called us to, something we've desired or something that he's promised us, he, you see the word of God says as we wait on him, as we spend time with him, his desires become our desires. The things that he wants us to do become a desire of our heart. And the word goes on to say he gives us the desires of our heart. The second word that I want us to concentrate on is power. As we wait on him, we have an authority and influence as well as strength or ability that comes upon us from him. You might say, well, well, I could never do that. I'm not good enough leader. I'm not good enough this. I'm not good enough that. Can I tell you, every one of those thoughts has come into my mind as, as I've, over these 20 years as we've waited to plant this church. Every one of those thoughts have come into my mind as a husband. Every one of those thoughts have come into my mind as a father. But we're standing here and saying, I'm not, I'm not dependent upon my own power. I'm dependent on the fact that he gives me his power. Do you hear that? Come on. He gives us power through him to accomplish whatever he has called us to do. As we wait upon him, he renews our strength in that. Are you weary today? Wait on him. Are you tired today? Wait on him. Are you fearful today? Wait on him. Are you full of anxiety today? Wait on him. Wait on him. Meditate on him. See how good he is. Turn off your TVs. Turn off your radios. Turn off whatever's going on and meditate on him. And see his authority and his influence come through you. You see, he gives us favor. He gives us insight. We can stand before paupers and we can stand before kings and have authority and love in him. We can have wisdom in every circumstance we're in because he is with us and we have the mind of Christ in all that's going on. The last thing, and this is something our church has been, we're planted for, is revival. Making something new again. 
to renew something, that reviving of what's going on. The reason we're planting Story Church is because the majority of Lubbock does not know Jesus as our Lord and Savior or is not walking with Him. And we want to come in and say, it's time to do that. This could be a season that he's allowing these things to happen so that we're coming back and we're meditating on him and he's reviving within us those dreams. He's reviving within us our relationship with him. He's reviving. He's making something new again. Some of you, I feel like, are saying, well, I'm too old. No, you're not too old. I'm too young. No, you're not too young. I'm to this or to that. I've done this. I've done that. I don't care. And, and the deal is when we lay that at his feet, he takes that away and he renews us. He revives us. He brings life back into those dreams. So this morning, I close with this. If you need prayer, press that on the screen today. We have guys just anxious to pray for you. If you don't know him, it's time. You need to, to press that on the screen. So, so press on there. Say, say, what are the next steps I need to take? And we will get in contact with you. We'll contact you today. But for the majority of us, I feel like at our church that are watching this, where I'm at is this. is It is time to not walk in fear anymore. To not walk in the circumstances of the world anymore. To not walk in the circumstances of our own lives anymore. To, to, to rest in him. To hear his voice. To hear his purpose. To have his presence. And to say, God, you're not just enough. You're more than enough. As I close, I want you to hear this. From the bottom of my heart. God, I believe this with everything in me. God has something special for you. He has created you for a purpose that no one else has created for. And where the enemy may have tried to come in and steal that joy, because the word of God says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The enemy wants to steal that. Where the enemy may come in and bring anxiety, the word of God says we don't have to be anxious for anything. But he wants to come in and bring that anxiety and put that anxiety on us. We can come in and we can stand, and I want you to stand today and go, okay, God, I've laid down this, this thing that you've put on my heart, and I want to pick it back up, and I want you to be all about it. Maybe you come and you say, well, I don't even know anything that he's laid on my heart. Spend time today and say, God, what do you have for me? What do you want me to do? This is the time. This is the place. This is the season. And we are the church to do it. We are his kids, and he is all loving, caring Father that will fight our battles with one hand and hold us close with another. Let's pray. Father God, we come this morning thanking you for who you are. Thanking you for, for the, what you've done in the past, what you're doing today, and what you're going to do in the future. You are a great God. There is no God like you. And Father, this morning, we come together and I pray over every man and lady, over every boy and girl that's listening. For those that know you as their Lord and Savior, for those that don't yet. And we're coming to you and we're saying we need you. We want you. We desire you. Father, let us meditate on you. Let us wait upon you. Let us see where you're moving and move with you. And Father, I pray a blessing over everyone listening today. I pray a blessing over marriages, that marriages will be strong. Father, for those that are not married yet but have that desire, I thank you that their mate is coming and that they are men and women of God, that, that, that you're building strong marriages in Jesus' name. Father, for those that are wanting kids this morning, I thank you kids are coming. And Father, I thank you that we can rest in you assured that you have not forgotten us and you have not forsaken us, but that you want to bless us. And Father, I am praying and I am proclaiming in Jesus' name that everyone that is a member of Story Church or a member of the church at large, that we are, we are blessed to be a blessing. And that today 
and tomorrow and this week and this month and this year and for the rest of our lives, we're going to walk in the blessing of you, having confidence and assurance of who you've called us to be. Oh, you're a great God, and we love you, and I thank you that you're with all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I'm so thankful for you. I want you to know, one, Melissa and I are praying for you daily. Two, we love you. If there's anything you need, please let us know. We will do whatever we can to meet that need. We have some crazy things coming up that I want to share with you quickly, some quick announcements. If you're not following us on social media, please do that. And the second thing with that is if you are following us on social media, please boost our posts so that we can share those. We're trying to get videos out. We're trying to get things out on there and, and share what's going on. So this week specifically with Easter coming up, we're going to have a great Easter service next Sunday. We may not be launching in our new building, but, but we are going to have a great service right here together. And I want you to be a part of it. It'll be at 1030. Invite your friends to watch. It's time that we start inviting people to be a part of a relationship with a God that loves us so much and has purpose for us. Please be a part of that. Um, you will see some different things coming out on social media this week uh, with some possible, we're talking through some things that we can do. And I want you to look into that and, and see if you can be a part of those things. So so you need to be updated on that. I'm trying to update the website as often as I can so you can press in there. I want you to know how much you mean to me. You mean so, so much to me, and I'm so thankful that I get to be your pastor. You're a blessing to me, and you're a blessing to others. And, and we are going to make a difference in this city, in this state, in this world, in Jesus' name. So I look forward to talking to you soon. Um, if, you're in a, if you're not in a story group yet, get in one. If you are in one, man, tag on to that Zoom. It's going to be a great week. God bless. Know that I love you.